Hi folks, you've found Trail 90 Fix Up Project Part 6. In the last episode, I almost completely assembled the Trail 90 engine only to find out that the cylinder base gasket that I constructed out of this generic paper gasket material is too thick and needs to be replaced. This requires a little bit of backtracking because I have to remove the cylinder head and the cylinder to replace the gasket but I've had some time to get my mind right, clear my thoughts, and collect a positive attitude, and now I'm ready to complete the job and get this thing put back together again. Well, I've got it taken apart again. I've ripped off my beautiful homemade gasket. And now I'm just going to apply a nice thin layer of silicone gasket maker on this cylinder taking extra care around this oil passageway because I don't want it to get clogged. Okay, the application of the silicone gasket is complete. Now I'll put it together and hope for the best. And I'll put this head gasket in place. This poor head gasket is getting pinched more than a person going to a funeral on St. Patrick's Day. Weren't we just doing this? No, foreigner, this does not feel like the first time. Okay, now we're ready to move forward again. I really should have listened to the little voice. Maybe next time. Next, we need to adjust the valves. You can't forget about the valves. Factory Honda service manual says adjust the valve lash to 0 .002 inches, which corresponds with 0 .051 millimeters, as indicated here on my feeler gauge. So to adjust the valve, we loosen up this lock nut with a 9 millimeter wrench, then slip the feeler gauge under here and tighten it down until you feel a little bit of resistance and tighten up the lock nut while holding the top of the adjustment screw so it doesn't move. And make sure to do this adjustment with the piston at top dead center on compression stroke. Okay, that's pretty good. It's a little bit loose, but that's okay. This is a brand new intake valve. It's going to seat in there and tighten up pretty quickly anyway, I think. And it's the same procedure for the exhaust side. Okay, now I can put these valve caps on. Here's a tip for aesthetics. If one valve cap is uglier than the other, go ahead and put that one down here on the exhaust side so nobody sees it. Looks like somebody went after this one with a pipe wrench. Eh? Eh? No! Use the proper tool for the job. Valve caps are on. Now let's install this side cover. Just out of curiosity, I wonder what the professional consensus is on reusing broken 40-year-old gaskets. Okay, let's move over to this side of the engine now. And here's what I was alluding to with my cheeky gasket comment moments ago. I don't want to remove this gasket and put silicone here because I fear that the thickness of this gasket has some determination of where this oil seal lands on the camshaft. And I don't want to change anything with those tolerances. Now I've heard from a few sources that there is a new and novel idea called purchasing new gaskets, but I try not to get involved with anything too cutting edge, so I'm going to avoid that. What I'll do instead is take just a little bit of silicone. I'm almost out of this silicone. It's all dried up from here to here and down here as well. There's just a little pocket of good stuff here and I poked a hole to access it. But anyway, I cleaned up this surface right here and I'll 
put a little bit of silicone and don't be too worried about this this is an area of very little ceiling it's kind of like a gazebo in that effect very little ceiling because there's not a lot of oil right here now luckily I have the broken piece of gasket and we'll see how it works. If it doesn't work, it's not a big job to replace it later on. A little bit of grease here where the oil seal rides. And I'll just pop this on here real quick before anybody sees what I did with that gasket. Okay, and that's what I like to see as I tighten it down. I see a little bit of that silicone gooshing out here, which means it likely made a good seal. So the bets are on whether that'll work or not. The next thing I want to do is place this timing advance mechanism on the camshaft. I can't do that just yet though because like most things on Dear Elsa, it's frozen. This outer sleeve is supposed to move independently of this inner part and as you can see they are as one. So let's see if I can break it apart without breaking anything. Some people have a lot of vices. I only have one. I've had this part soaking in oil since the beginning of this project because I noticed early on that it needed attention, but it's being pretty stubborn. Now I'll grab it down here with one of my favorite tools, needle nose vice grips. They come in handy all the time. I'll grab it here instead of here because this is where the points rub against and I want to keep that spot smooth but down here should be okay for pliering on. Is pliering a word? Mm-hmm. Did you see that? Okay. So it's not frozen solid anymore but still awfully tight. I'll just give in and take apart the whole thing and oil it up. Do a, a full Monty on it. These little clips are the worst. Whenever I remove them, they like to go sailing. Put some steel wool to it. Everything's clean and smooth now, so I'll just apply a little bit of grease to both parts and put it back together. Okay. Smooth as silk. Now I can install the advanced mechanism onto the camshaft. The way this works is, as the engine speeds up, these weights move outward, which turns this outer sleeve, which makes the ignition points open sooner. The next thing to be installed are the ignition points, which are still hanging off the motorcycle, I believe. So let's make a trek over there, and let's just see if we can get to the points. You know, I came into some computer monitors recently. Great merchandise, great merchandise. It's just a matter of moving them. And let's see, here we are. Ignition points, complete with spider webs. Let me just take you. Would you believe it? The points actually look pretty good. I gave them a quick shot of oil here at the hinge, and they operate really smoothly. It turns out I don't have a points file but I'll use some fine grade sandpaper just to dress them up a little bit. And after a little bit of sanding and then cleaning with volatile solvent, here's how the points look. And I'll put this onto the engine. This little mark here should line up with the stamp on the case. I think that's a base reference. 
and even though I don't know if the engine will even run, I'll go ahead and adjust the ignition point gap and timing. They say adjust the gap first and do this by rotating the engine until the gap is at the maximum. And I'll tell you a secret, I'm going to guess at that. Call it right there and it should be between 0.3 and 0.4 millimeters. It's a little tight. Now I turn this until the gap is what I want it to be. Call it right there. And retighten the screws. To adjust the timing, I'll use my multimeter set on continuity. When I touch the terminals together, it will make a noise. I'll connect one terminal to the lead on the points, and the other one grounded out to the engine some way. And I'll loosen these screws that hold this plate in position enough that I can rotate it. And I need to turn the plate such that when this little F mark aligns with this index mark on the compression stroke, I hear a noise. So let's turn this. It is actually extremely close. So I'll just move this just a tad and recheck. That should run, folks. Perfect. And I'll put this bolt in to hold the advanced mechanism in place. It's always a milestone when the time has come to install an outer cover. That means that things are progressing. And just like that, through skill, luck, and even a few missteps, the assembly of the top end is complete. Now I need to focus down here and try to figure out what's going on with the two-speed gearbox and this cover, which looks like it's been off for a while. Yummy! When I found this machine, left for dead, in a field a few weeks ago, this is just how it looked. All of the screws were out of this cover. It was loose and it was open here, so the weather was allowed to freely penetrate the internals of the engine for years and years and years. So who knows what I will find. Maybe a nest of field mice. Charlotte's Web. Insect Cocoon. Sorry Uncle Wasp. Gasket Remnants. And all the things you would expect to find inside an engine. So I suppose I should try to clean off some of the crusty yuck. I think if this machine does run, a few very, very frequent oil changes would do it some good because all of the debris that I won't be able to reach will be washed around and hopefully washed out when I change the oil. Okay, that's looking better. I'll clean up this cover a little bit now. I think it's already clean enough you could eat off of it and get sick. I see here we have a nice little cavity of decades-old greasified engine oil. I don't think the previous owners took very good care of this machine. I wash thee, cleanse thy grease and dirt with gasoline. I wouldn't call it factory fresh, but I think it's clean enough for its duties here on the ranch. And I really need to get this thing put back together. I'm beginning to forget that it's an engine, not just a collection of rusty old parts that I cleaned up. 
I'll break out my new tube of gasket maker for this job. I've got my gasket looking pretty spiffy. Let's put this on. It's hard to believe, but in the coffee cans full of parts, I found all of the bolts for this cover. The bolts are all in the main cover. Now I'll just put this last outer cover on. That cover is tight and the assembly of the engine is done. Think again. What? Oh! Two speed final drive. Honda's answer to an underpowered machine. So I suppose I'll just clean these parts off one by one and install them in their little compartment. I think I've found the only clean part on this motorcycle. This shaft is not rusty or dirty or pitted. I don't know what to do with it. Okay guys, I've got the auxiliary transmission put back together. It looks like all the parts are there. Hopefully whatever turkey took this thing apart back in the 1980s was paying attention and didn't lose anything. But who knows, he could have been distracted by cocaine and night ranger. It looks like it goes into the gears. There's one gear and there's the other gear. So I'll pop the cover back on here and then the engine will be put back together. For the gasket that goes between this case and the gearbox cover, I'm using some of this paper gasket material that I swore off earlier. In this application, the thickness of the gasket is critical so that the tops of these shafts don't contact the bottom of this case, rendering them immovable. Okay, that's the last screw, and I have to say, I'm feeling a little bit giddy. Ding, 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 ding! The engine is assembled. I'm just lucky it wasn't a time trial. And I think it looks marvelous. But will it run? Hmm. I just reminded myself of Jeremy Clarkson. It performs well around the racetrack, but I'm also tall. Anyway, to answer the question of whether or not this newly assembled engine has any life left in it, I first need to dig out the motorcycle from a sea of stuff. And since this video series is about motorcycle repair and not tidying up the workshop, I bid you farewell until next time. Thanks for watching.